Okay, good morning everybody. Today we have another round two escalation tournament game between FN and BR. I don't know much about these two players. BR is in the top left. He is the dark green arm commander who's going vehicle first. And in the bottom right, we have FN, the other arm commander, who is also going vehicle first. As I said, I I I do uh, I do like vehicles first more on this map. Uh, it is very big, uh, and with this uh, giant distance between the two bases, I think vehicles are very ideal. Um, I prefer K bots on maps that have uh, uh, more rocky terrain, uh, you know, difficult passages, um, you know, kind of uh, un uneven dynamics, you know, uh, places that are difficult to uh, traverse. K-Bots tend to be very good. And uh, BR is sending down some Jeffies, no doubt, to do a little harassment if he can, if he can get away with it. Let's see if there's if he catches anything. There is a construction vehicle here that's undefended. Might be able to pick that off if he had all, f all five of these. If they could uh, find this construction vehicle by its lonesome, they might be able to uh, do some damage. I don't know if he's watching. Oh, he found it. That construction vehicle is certainly dead and uh, so yeah so a little successful harassment by BR he uh, as you can see just turned on the shoot all command so that he his units will automatically target uh, non-combatants and it looks like FN is going to respond with some flashes in kind to try to clean up this very very annoying harassment and I would say successful I'd say BN certainly got accomplished um, more than he could have probably hoped for with those five Jeffies. So, really good job to him. And uh, it does look like FN has gotten a single flash uh, behind enemy lines here. He's got a metal extractor. And there's a little skirmishing going on here in the middle as well. Uh, unfortunately, with these color palettes, it's... It's a little bit different to, uh, a little bit difficult to uh, tell the difference between the two players' units. The flashes almost look identical, but uh, we're just going to have to do the best we can here. Looks like another, another flash got by, took out a metal extractor. Nothing too devastating so far, but uh, yeah, overall this is, this is kind of what you expect at the... Uh, start of the game on this map it is the gauntlet um, there is quite a chasm between the two bases and it does take uh, quite a commitment of time to uh, get your units from uh, get your chickens from one side of the road to the other uh, and uh, so FN is still content to send flashes down the map Get some harassment done. See see what kind of economic damage he can uh, inflict on his opponent. And uh, oh, okay. So BR has built uh, a line of defenders here. This is kind of interesting. On the edge of the map, uh, they're going to be a little bit difficult to deal with. Uh, in escalation, they don't do the most damage um, as compared to in original TA. Defenders were. Uh, undeniably the best form of defense they, they were cheap you can spam them they're good they're great against air and land but uh, in escalation they only do a fraction of the damage against land that they do against air so they're not uh, not quite as effective against flashes but uh, if you have enough of them over over time they will eventually clean up those flashes so uh, yeah, not not a lot being accomplished here. Just uh, just a little harassing uh, by FN, but uh, 
Nothing too... Nothing too uh, crippling or catastrophic going on. Let's see what the players are doing. FN is still on a single vehicle plant. He is building a few energy storages. He's built three so far. And otherwise, he's, he's now pumping out javelins. Javelins will be insufficient number. Um, pretty good against flashes. They should be able to outmaneuver them, outrange them. If he can, like I said, if he can get enough. He, he has also gone a K-Bot lab closer to the middle here. And uh, BR, on the other hand, uh, is now doing a bit of a run-by down the left side here. He catches this construction vehicle uh, unawares and uh, stops him from building that geo. There's also another geo on uh, here in this corner. That's going to get most likely taken out. Yeah, he takes that out. And... Uh, FN is <laughs> bringing his javelins down to hopefully clean this up and uh, get his production back online. Uh, yeah, as I said, these javelins that FN has built uh, should be able to clean up those flashes. Uh, you know, they should be... Um, they should have a positive engagement against them. They should uh, have an advantage for sure. If if he has enough of them, uh, flashes are still faster. If you can get enough flashes, you can surround them. But uh, javelins, if microed correctly and in sufficient numbers, um, do have an advantage against flashes. And so we'll have to see how that pans out. He's got quite a few javelins at this point. It looks like he's got at least 10, maybe more. So, uh, at this point, I'd say he has the composition advantage uh, in combat. Let's see what BR is doing. He has gone T2 vehicles. So, um, yeah, like I said, at the moment, FN has the advantage, but we'll have to see how long that lasts. Uh, once BR starts uh, to pump out T2 vehicles, uh, he will definitely be able to turn the tides. And so here we have a little battle in the middle. As predicted, the javelins are doing really well, but he needs to micro them back. He needs to keep them out of range of those flashes. And, uh, yep. Predictably, he, um, he did win that engagement. And now he essentially has control of the middle. But BR is now bringing out Panthers, and Panthers should themselves have a, uh, pretty... <laughs> pretty significant advantage over the javelins and so this is this is definitely a uh, an example of there's there's always a bigger fish uh, you know the circle of life type thing and so uh, <laughs> javelins beat panthers I mean javelins beat flashes panthers beat uh, javelins and Zeus's beat panthers and so uh, we have a never-ending cycle of players building counters to counters to counters and uh, we'll have to see what BR decides to build in order to counter the Zeus's because as I said Zeus's should do pretty good against Panthers in equal numbers of course uh, because uh, Zeus's have more health and uh, they do similar damage maybe maybe Zeus's do more but yeah Zeus's are tankier and uh, overall going to be pretty good against those Panthers. And so I would assume that BR, in response, will start building Bulldogs, because Bulldogs counter Zeus's. But as you can see, these Zeus's have won this battle, and uh, BR is going to have to make a tech switch if he wants to stay in, in this game, if he wants to stay competitive. He really needs to start building Bulldogs. Um... All right, let's look at their bases. BR is still on one advanced vehicle plant. A little bit of a skirmish here happening in the mid. FN does have one Maverick. Let's see what else FN's doing. Okay, FN has gone advanced K-Bots. It's a little... It's a little unexpected. Uh... Since he started vehicle, you might expect it, that he would go advanced vehicle first, but uh, he has decided that uh, he wants to go 
K-Bots instead. It's not a not a terrible choice. Uh, these Mavericks are just going to absolutely chew through these Panthers uh, like it's going out of style. That's uh, not even a, a close matchup. Uh, Mavericks themselves are kind of glass cannons. They do an incredible amount of damage at a relatively short range. But uh, in order to counter the Mavericks, you really need to either outrange them or you need to DPS them down very quickly. Because as I said, they are they are glass cannons. They're very scary. Uh, and uh, yeah, it looks like BR has made the correct choice. He's not going Bulldogs. Bulldogs can outrange both uh, Zeus's and Mavericks. Uh, and uh, also they're faster than both of them. Well, they might be about the same speed as Mavericks, but either way, they can they can outrange them and slowly kite them into oblivion. Uh, but it also does uh, come down to unit control. Uh, BR will need to be on his toes. He he will need to react to this very quickly. But uh, overall, I, I do give these bulldogs uh, quite an advantage uh, in this situation if they're if they're kind of micro to stay out of range of these K-Bots. But uh, as we see, uh, FN here is, is trying to go for a run by. It looks like he's maybe going to try to get into BR's base. But no, he's decided he, he wants to engage in combat. He wants to get uh, up and, up and uh, close to those Bulldogs, see if he can do some serious damage. And then, and then deciding that it's probably not going to work out so well and uh, takes the remainder of his forces and attempts to get some economic damage done to his opponent. And uh, he does take out one Geo. It's respectable. It wasn't, uh, wouldn't say it was a total waste. I mean, Geos are relatively expensive and it was upgraded too, so he's gonna have to rebuild that and, and re-upgrade it if he wants to. But uh, here on the left side, we have some more Bulldogs Slowly making their way down. And uh, as I said, uh, FN is going to have to build a different composition, I think. And he is. He's going for his own Bulldogs. So that will that will put them essentially on even footing. Uh, at this point, it will kind of come down to who has more Bulldogs or who controls their units, who micros their units most effectively. Let's take a look at the bases again. Okay, FN has two GOs. He's got a couple... I mean... Uh, He's, he's got one fusion, he's working on a second one. He's got two advanced energy storages. He's got some resource generators. So FN is doing really good on resources, it seems like, especially energy. Here in the middle we have uh, a Bulldog War. Got some Zeus's thrown in. But uh, FN is clearly gonna come out on top of this particular engagement. Let's look at uh, BR's base here. He just has the one advanced vehicle plant. So just looking at these two bases, FN is definitely ahead in terms of economy. He had uh, a fusion. He was working on a second fusion. He had the resource generators. He had the advanced energy storages. Uh, he's just got much better uh, economy. And uh, I, I would say that gives him a huge advantage at this point. And, uh, j you know, just looking at the... Uh, at the statistics here, you can see that FN's got 190 metal per second and BR has about 120. So FN is about 70 metal per second ahead and he's about 3000 metal uh, energy ahead. So uh, at this point, uh, FN will slowly uh, outproduce, out macro his opponent unless something changes. Uh, BR would probably have to find some way to uh, inflict economic uh, catastrophe on FN in order to uh, equalize their their prospects here, but I don't I don't see how he could do that. He would he would probably need some uh, maybe some bombers uh, to uh, get into the uh, into the structure of FN's base and do some uh, some serious damage, but uh, he hasn't built air, so that's probably not going to happen. FN has built some Lugers here. Uh, this isn't a bad idea. They can outrange the Bulldogs. 
kind of outrange his opponent in general. And uh, they're also going to be decent against these bulwarks. Of course, bulwarks, when closed, uh, have quite a bit more health. So it will take quite a while to chew through these. But uh, perhaps that's his... Uh, Perhaps that's his plan. He just wants to slowly uh, pelt the uh, the bulwarks until they until they finally uh, succumb to the the pressure. I I wouldn't advise a, a frontal attack here. Uh, it does look like VR has more bulldogs and he has these bulwarks, and uh, it just seems like it's going to be very inefficient waste of resources to uh, try to push into that so uh, FN smartly attempts to retreat but as unfortunately his units are kind of getting caught on one another uh, Zeus's are quite a bit slower than Bulldogs and so the Bulldogs were getting caught on the Zeus's which kind of slowed them down and then there was essentially a big traffic jam in the middle which caused BR to uh, get quite a bit of, a, of an advantage in that particular engagement and uh, but now he has run into FN's bulwarks and it looks like FN is going to slowly clean this up and move back to the middle as I said before uh, if both players continue to trade evenly that is going to certainly favor FN because FN has a much more robust economy uh, which gives him the long-term advantage in this game if if we if it is just a war of attrition if it continues to be just a war of attrition FN will almost certainly come out on top so we'll have to see what BR is doing here to, uh, to try to give himself the leg up but uh, it doesn't look like much he is going adv advanced aircraft as I said before that is one uh, particular way particular strategy that he can use to get out of this situation if he were to build some T2 bombers and have an effective um, bombing campaign over FN's base take out some critical structures take out uh, deal some uh, c catastrophic economic damage uh, then he could equalize the playing field. But uh, it does look like FN is going to T3K bots. Uh, it's kind of what I was expecting. When he when he has such a huge economic lead, you definitely want to get even more ahead of your opponent on tech. And so by going uh, T3K bots, uh, he will be able to most likely pull even further ahead uh, with uh, some incredibly powerful units that BR will most definitely have a hard time dealing with. In the middle he is building penetrators finally. Uh, penetrators are very good against bulldogs because they outrange them and they do uh, a massive amount of front-loaded damage and so if he micros these penetrators correctly uh, he will be able to slowly move down the map and uh, gain uh, an attritional advantage over his opponent. As we saw in the game... Hang on. There's a lot of Lugers shooting here. There's a lot of Lugers. Uh, BR has also built an Ambusher and they are... Ambusher is very good against, especially against clumps of units. FN is pushing in here, but I don't know if this is a good idea. He has... BR just has so many defenses. Uh, I, I can't see this push really working. He does have the penetrators, uh, but uh, those penetrators are better over a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to single-handedly win this engagement. But he does need to keep them at max distance. He also has a, a shooter here, which is kind of a K-Bot version of a penetrator. But uh, yeah, as I said uh, in my last cast, if Bulldogs can get in range of Penetrators, uh, they are going to eat them alive. So Penetrators definitely need to uh, keep a distance, kite those Bulldogs. 
Yeah, as I was saying before the battle started in the game uh, between Rampage and Lord Vader, we've already seen how penetrators can almost single-handedly win a game if the if the opponent doesn't respond to them, if he just kind of allows them to uh, slowly harass from a from a distance and uh, eat their opponent's units alive with those extremely powerful blue lasers. They will uh, slowly but surely wither wither your uh, wither your forces until you have nothing left, and then uh, the the enemy player can just kind of push in with his with his his main uh, army and win the game. So we'll have to see if that's what happens here. Uh, FN has just completed an ambusher. As I said before, ambushers are very good in this kind of situation. They do a lot of damage at a very long range against clumps of units. And uh, FN will slowly push through here uh, with the help of those penetrators, with the help of the ambusher, and now with bulldogs in the front line. It looks like he has finally broken this defensive line. He should easily clean up these bulwarks with, with the penetrators he has. And uh, truth be told, I don't know that uh, BR has much left. It looks like he has built a couple transports and he is going to bring these transports down. Let's slow it down here. This is a, this is quite a sneaky strategy. This is a very unique, uh, <laughs> we haven't seen this uh, in any of the games so far on Gauntlet. But uh, to build these uh, expensive, what are they? I think they're T2. Yeah, these T2 transports, most likely he filled them with bulldogs. And uh, he's now going to fly into uh, a relatively undefended area of his opponent's base. Drop all these bulldogs. And uh, surprise! <laughs> uh, yeah, FN probably uh, didn't expect this. I certainly didn't expect this. This is a... Uh, this is a very clever strategy. Uh, he should be able to get something done. Most likely take out all these Moho extractors, uh, the Geos, maybe the Fusions. And uh, he, he, yeah, this was, uh, this was, I think, going to be quite an effective drop. Uh, kudos to uh, BR for that. But the problem is, FN's is going to roll right into his base. I mean, just uh, taking a look at at what BR has at, at the front uh, there's really almost nothing to stop this attack from just uh, slowly advancing into uh, BR's uh, exposed uh, economy uh, resource generators vehicle plants, constructors and even commander uh, from just being absolutely mutilated by by a combination of bulldogs and penetrators. He does have some brawlers, and it doesn't look like FN has built any air defense. Uh, I thought back at his base, he might have had some uh, some fighters, but uh, he hasn't brought them up. So these, these uh, brawlers will clean this up, but the question is how quickly they can do it, how much economic, how much uh, permanent uh, economic uh, damage FN can cause before he is finally taken out and uh, I think the answer to that is going to be quite a bit because uh, brawlers are good and he has a lot of them but uh, FN has a ton of stuff uh, the, the commander might be able to come down here and degun this stuff but it does look like he does he has a Zeus on him so he's in he's in real trouble let's, let's look at VR's view see how much our BR's view see how much health he has left he did dig on that bulldog, and uh, he is going to uh, continue to run to the east, see if he can uh, get away from this. He's about half health, and as as I said, these brawlers will slowly clean up this force I, in uh, in the absence of any kind of anti-air, any kind of flak, any kind of phalanx, uh, or fighters, or uh, vamps, uh, hawks rather. He, uh, he has no way to deal with these brawlers, and so they are slowly cleaning everything up. But as I said, I believe uh, permanent economic damage has been done to uh, BR. 
I don't really see how he comes back from this position. The brawlers are very annoying and they will continue to take out all of uh, FN's forces, at least until he builds some anti-air. But uh, in the meantime, BR really has no way to come back into this game. Uh, well, those Bulldogs actually uh, got a lot done. Uh, I, in a way, I take it back. I wasn't, I wasn't watching, but they did sweep through here and take out most of his base. But the, again, the problem is... Uh, I don't think this commander is going to be able to get away. Uh, FN really, uh, BR doing a good job of kind of sneaking his commander down here, but, uh, the truth is, uh, this commander is now trapped in a corner, and it's going to be a good game. Oh, no, I was wrong. He was able to climb up the cliff. I had no idea that commander could just walk into the mountains. So, uh, wow. That's impressive. So, uh, okay guys, well, I'm very surprised that the commander can walk into the mountains like that. Uh, I don't think FN realized that he could do that either. But the thing is, FN still has more. He still has more of a base. Uh, more infrastructure, more economy. Just looking at the mega map, he still has the whole this whole center, mostly of the map. Uh, as I said before, I wasn't really watching as these bulldogs just tore through most of uh, FN's base, and that was a pretty tremendous uh, drop, and it did a lot. But but still, I, I don't see how BR comes back from this particular position, even even if his commander can. Um, turn into a dwarf and walk, you know, walk into the mountains to, to get away. And, uh, yeah, BR realizes it's over. So that was, that was a really cool game. A lot of ingenuity, uh, on, on behalf of both players. Uh, BR's drop was totally unexpected and, and did an incredible amount of damage. Um, it, it seemed like FN was caught completely unprepared. But ultimately, FN just had too much stuff. His economy was uh, way too robust for BR to uh, to be able to deal with. Uh, but uh, yeah, wonderful game. Very creative. I like this map because it does lead to all these kinds of uh, creative and unorthodox strategies. And uh, I, yeah, I think both players did a really good job. And I'm excited to uh, watch the next game. Okay, this is game two. Uh, of round two of the TA Escalation Pro 2021 tournament. And this is again between FN and BR. At the top left, we have BR, the dark green arm commander, going hovercraft first. That's interesting. It's an interesting build. And in the bottom right, we have the deep blue arm commander. FN, who has gone shipyard first. Now, as I said the last time I casted this map uh, between Harold and Oscar, this is an interesting map because there are several different ways that you can start. Hovercrafts are an option, ships are an option, and in the last game, Harold went seaplanes first, so that was a very unorthodox start. Uh, I personally think that ships are the best to start with. Uh, ships are incredibly cost-effective uh, because they can only uh, traverse the water, and so they're built for that, and they're very, very powerful. Where hovercrafts, being more of a hybrid unit, uh, are not as cost-effective just because they can traverse both land and water, which makes them decent at both, but arguably not great at either. And so we'll have to see how that plays out in this particular game. It does look like FN has, uh, he has managed to move a fleet of Skeeters past BR's defenses and is now taking out all these wind generators. Uh, and that is a very devastating economic blow to BR but just because he now no longer has much energy production at all. And it's going to be very difficult to... Um, 
Well, to continue producing anything, uh, it looks like this hovercraft platform is slowly being taken down by these Skeeters, and uh, that, that might be a good game. I mean, the, uh, the commander really has no way to deal with these Skeeters. That's part of what uh, makes this, uh, these, these water maps uh, so unforgiving and brutal, is that uh, the commander can't really defend his base the way he can on, on land maps which creates a, creates a really difficult situation when your opponent rushes you like, like uh, FN has done with these Skeeters. Uh, you can't just degun them, you can't laser them down. There's really not much the commander can do except just watch as his base is uh, slowly uh, you know, torn apart, torn asunder by his, his enemy's uh, raiders, uh, Skeeters in this case, and uh, yeah. BR is, is in a very difficult situation here. Uh, he is building a single vanguard, but the, the vanguard was killed for the most part before he even got out of the uh, out of production. And uh, yeah, it looks like this game is already over. Uh, props to uh, FN for this, uh, this very sneaky and very effective scout rush uh, that, uh, that caught BR totally unawares. And uh, I, I would say again, you know, going hovercraft first on this map, um, it's not a, you know, it's it's not a, a, a totally unviable strategy. It can work, but uh, you know, in in the water, I, I think ships are are uh, better. I'm just in terms of cost effectiveness, ships are uh, ships are superior, and uh, we've kind of seen that in this game. Um, well, it's not as though BR couldn't have countered the the skeeters but he would have needed to uh he would have needed to keep his units uh close to his base it does look like he took uh his single construction hovercraft and has now built some uh wind generators here on this little plateau and he's going for an aircraft plant let's see what else he's doing not much it does look like fn has gone for a second shipyard and he's kind of covering the map and metal extractors, uh, underwater metal extractors, kind of what you'd expect, but for the most part, uh, BR's in a lot of trouble. Uh, FN has now brought a couple mariners, which do have depth charges, which will ultimately be able to slowly clean up this commander. As you can see, the depth charges don't do the most damage, but uh, they will over time whittled down this commander's health until uh, he succumbs to the the endless uh, harassment and uh, yeah good game uh, that was a that was a short one but the as I said this this map corrupted waters is uh, usually very short and sweet very brutal games but uh, yeah that was a really interesting game good series and uh, great job on behalf of both players. But uh, FN does move on. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next game.